Today I want to talk a little bit more about enthalpy and also to kind of derive some of the expressions that we use that help to relate enthalpy or the heat of the reaction to some of the other thermodynamic quantities that we've talked about in past videos. So thinking about heat, thinking about work, thinking about internal energy, and kind of relating all of these variables together. So let's talk a little bit more about H, which is enthalpy. So enthalpy is the heat of some sort of chemical species or chemical process. Um, in thermodynamics, we usually look at the change. And as chemists, we're interested in the change going from reactants to products of a chemical reaction. But each of these species within that reaction has a specific energy or heat that's associated with it. And we call that the enthalpy. Now this is related then to the internal energy U which again, I don't really know why we use U for that. I feel like we just ran out of variables. <laughs> so the internal energy there is U. And then PV here is the pressure times the volume. And this is a quantity that we use um, specifically to look at the heat or energy of gases because gases are related to or when we're thinking about gases and measuring gases the pressure and the volume of that gas are going to relate to how quickly those particles are moving around the energy of that gas so pressure and volume are also related to work and we'll get into that a little bit later but uh, we define H as this combination of internal energy and the pressure times the volume of the system now all of these variables, u, p, and v, are all what are called state functions. And a state function is a property of a system that is not dependent on the path that it took you to get there, or it's independent of the way that I got to that particular property. Doesn't matter how I got there, I'm here now, I can measure this. So that's the state function. Uh, this is as opposed to a path function. There are some properties that are path dependent, so it matters the path that it took to get there. But for U, P, and V, it doesn't matter how they got there, just that they've arrived. So just to kind of illustrate this idea, because I think state functions and path functions are a little bit confusing. Um, if I was to go from A to B, and it took me 5 kilojoules per mole to get there, and then I went from B to C, and that took me 25 kilojoules per mole, and then I went from C to D, and that maybe took 10 kilojoules per mole. And then from D to E, what? took me 30 kilojoules per mole. And then maybe from E to F, it took me 30 kilojoules. So here's my path. If we're kind of thinking about it that way. I went from A to F. And kind of the steps along the way each had specific energies that are associated with them. Again, my units here are kilojoules for every mole that I'm reacting of each of those things. Now if I could also go from A to F in one step and it takes me 100 kilojoules per mole, then I would say that whatever that process is, this is a state function. So whatever it is, however I got there from A to F, so long as it took the same amount of energy regardless of the path that I took to get there, then we would call that the state function. So this is just kind of, um, you know, sort of a silly little illustration, but I think it helps to kind of ground it in something visual. Okay, so in order to kind of talk about how we get to that U plus PV, we have to talk a little bit more about the law of thermodynamics, the first law of thermodynamics. There's multiple laws of thermodynamics. The first is the law of conservation of energy, and I've talked about this in other videos. When I've defined conservation of energy before, I've said, well, we can change the form of it. I can go from potential to kinetic energy. I can transfer the energy so I can go from one thing to another. So, um, you know, if I'm writing, then the movement of my hand, the energy, the kinetic energy of my hand will be transferred to my pen, which is going to cause my pen to move. So that energy is then conserved. Um, and mathematically, when we're trying to talk about the first law of thermodynamics, we say that that change in internal energy, so that's my U here, so this is delta U, which indicates a change. That's equal to the heat, that's Q, plus the work, 
Now physicists might get a little bit crabby about this because sometimes the first law of thermodynamics is written this way, where the change in internal energy is equal to Q minus W. And the reason for that has to do with the signs of things. So with the way that I've written it here, and this is the way that most chemists think about it, with the way that I've written it here, I don't know if the work is being done by the system or to the system. When I'm doing it, when I write it this way, I'm assuming that the work is being done by the system, and so energy is flowing from the system into surroundings. So it's still adding the work, and the work would be negative, right? But instead of that, they say it's a positive quantity and we're subtracting it. So I think that's a little bit confusing. Um, so this is kind of, we'll save this for the physicists. So for us, so long as we understand the sign of the work, we'll end up with the same and correct sign that will indicate whether or not the energy is flowing from the system to the surroundings or from the surroundings into the system. And if you're shaky on that concept, I have another video that's about work and heat and defining the system and surroundings. So I would encourage you to check that out. Okay, so uh, work here then is defined as the negative pressure times the change in volume. And again, we're thinking about gases here primarily. When we're thinking about thermodynamics and the study of moving particles, gases are sort of the most interesting system. And that's really where a lot of scientists started in studying the laws of thermodynamics and the energy and heats of different systems. So P here is for pressure. So that can have an, any number of units, but pressure is always positive. I can never have a negative pressure. You can talk about negative pressures, but that's always in comparison to something else. So that would be a change in pressure, and the change in pressure could be negative, but the pressure quantity itself cannot be negative. It's always going to be positive. And the change in volume is really about whether or not things are expanding or contracting. So if a gas expands outwards, then the system is doing work on the surroundings. Right, so expansion. Expansion means we're losing from the system's perspective. So we're expanding outwards. Which makes sense, because the change in volume then, the final volume is going to be larger than the initial volume. So that's going to give you a positive number. If we're contracting, so meaning that the gases are getting more condensed, we're pushing them together, or applying some sort of pressure to put them together, then we're going to have a negative delta V because my final volume is going to be smaller than my initial volume. So that difference is going to indicate that. So the work that's either being done to the system or by the system will be negative or positive depending on that. So this is one of the ways that we define work. All right, now let's think about how this relates to our delta H, because we just talked about how pressure and volume are related to delta H. So let's kind of put this all together and relate delta H to the heat, which is really ultimately how we defined it. We said it's the heat of the chemical reaction, but then every variable I gave you was about internal energy, pressure, and volume. So how the heck does this relate to heat? Well, first, let's rewrite our first law of thermodynamics. So the change in internal energy is equal to Q plus W. Now, I just said that work is equal to the negative pressure times the change in volume, so I'm going to plug that in for my W. Now, let's rearrange this thing and solve it for Q. So that means that the delta U plus P delta V is equal to my heat, right? So I've just kind of rearranged and brought my P delta V to the other side. And if I think about my changes as final minus initial, which is what they are, then I could say that Q is equal to Kind of the final internal energy minus the initial internal energy plus my pressure volume final minus my pressure volume initial right 
Now, if I put these things together, if I kind of combine some like terms here, then I'm going to put all of my final values together and all of my initial values together. So I'm just going to reorganize this thing. I'm not going to mess with it except for doing some organizational stuff. So I'm going to say that the final internal energy plus my P volume final, let's put those guys together. And then I'm going to subtract from it because I'm subtracting this guy. I'm subtracting this guy. I'm going to subtract from it my internal energy initially plus my P initial volume. So all I did is I combined together the terms that have initial values and I've combined together the terms that have final values and I made it look like this. So I can do that because of, you know, my, my properties, my commutative properties of mathematics. So I'm just reorganizing this thing. Now, when I look at this, remember that H is equal to U plus PV, right? If we recall that. So that means that my enthalpy final is equal to this guy. That's this guy. And my enthalpy initial is equal to this one. So that means that the heat is equal to the final enthalpy minus the initial enthalpy. And if I put that together, then the heat is equal to my change in H. So again, we call this the enthalpy of the reaction, the heat of the reaction. And so that enthalpy is equal to Q. And this is going to be a very important relationship, especially in a laboratory where we're actually measuring changes in temperatures of things. We can measure the heat of a chemical process, and then we can back out information based on this relationship. So this is a little bit more in detail about the factors that go into my enthalpy and also kind of the details of some of these variables that we're playing around with and manipulating in order to measure these quantities. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, I will talk to you again soon.